Instagram.com. Knack is back. You're probably wondering, well, what is Knack and where did it go and why is it back? Well, it's back on Amazon in terms of retail sales and it's N-acetylcysteine. We're going to talk about where it was, why it went, and why it's back, and a bunch of other things on this COVID-19 update. Well, we first talked about NAC as a supplement way back in May of 2020. That was before there were good preventatives and therapeutics for COVID-19. And the reason why we brought this up was because of good scientific evidence that NAC or N-acetylcysteine was a supplement that could attenuate the severity of viral infections, especially with the flu. And we specifically referenced this article, which was published in 1997 in the European Respiratory Journal, titled Attenuation of Influenza-Like Symptomatology and Improvement of Cell-Mediated Immunity with Long-Term N-Acetyl Treatment. And in this study, they took 262 subjects over a winter season and put them on NAC tablets at 600 milligrams twice daily for six months. And then they recorded the amount of infections and symptomatology in this group. And what they found was really interesting. They found that there was no difference in the groups in terms of the amount or the number of diagnoses of influenza based on testing. However, when they looked at the symptomatic form of the flu, they found that in the placebo group, 79% of the positive subjects had symptomatic form of the virus, whereas in the NAC group, only 25% of the virus-infected subjects under NAC treatment developed a symptomatic form. So if we look at the denominator as those people becoming infected, notice here that we have an absolute risk reduction of actually over 50%. So that's basically a greater than 50% absolute risk reduction. That's huge. The number needed to treat there is only two. And folks, back in May of 2020, I was a critical care physician, still am. Well, I was taking care of two different units full of COVID-19 patients and I could not afford to come down with symptomatic COVID. Now, of course, the flu is different from COVID, so I was taking, and I was telling people I was taking 600 milligrams of NAC twice a day, and I did it basically through that entire season. And at that time, we did an update 59, which actually went through a lot of the different supplements that I was taking, and one of them at that time included N-acetylcysteine. There was also another update that we did, Update 92, which we'll put a link to all of these videos in the description below, where we talked about the blood clots and von Willebrand's factor and how it created fibrinogen and cross-linking and that how N-acetylcysteine in some studies could actually work as a thrombolytic. So, of course, we did not have any randomized placebo-controlled trials on NAC in COVID-19, There was this study that looked at severe acute respiratory syndrome caused by COVID-19, and unfortunately, it was a negative study there. But despite that, I felt pretty good about taking it because of previous randomized placebo-controlled trial data, at least in influenza, which is always an issue as you're going into a winter season. So we've extensively covered NAC, and NAC stands for N-acetylcysteine, which is basically a supplement that was first FDA approved as a medicine back in 1963 and later became off prescription and able to be delivered over the counter. Now, NAC is used in liver toxicity. It's used in a number of liver conditions. It's also used as a respiratory drug to help break up secretions and make them more expectoratable, if that's a term. NAC is also important in terms of regenerating glutathione. Glutathione is a major antioxidant that mops up reactive oxygen species like hydrogen peroxide. And that's important because reactive oxygen species is implicated in the pathogenesis of COVID-19. And of course, that was important because we felt that there was a real problem with oxidative stress in COVID-19 mainly because the ACE2 receptor is also an enzyme that's involved in balancing reactive oxygen species. And we've talked about that in a number of different lectures here at MedCram. So here's the problem. 
Ever since NAC has been able to be purchased over the counter without a prescription, there have been a number of companies that have been marketing hangover treatments and things of that nature and using NAC as an ingredient in their formulations that they're selling. And the FDA has been actually looking at this for some period of time going back to 2010. And it finally came to a culmination in July of 2020, interestingly, when there was an FDA letter basically sent to a number of different companies. And one of them was this one, Les Labs. And you can see here, it was addressed to uh, the representative there at the company. And basically, you can read the letter, and we'll put a link in the description below. But the two points that the FDA was making is, number one, you're making claims that really are not substantiated. And number two, one of the ingredients in your formulation is not a dietary supplement. They say here that and acetylcysteine is not a dietary supplement. They say specifically based on the product label on your website, it appears as though you intend to market your detox for hangovers product, which contains N acetylcysteine as a dietary supplement. They go on to say here, you should take prompt action to correct the violations cited in this letter. Failure to promptly correct these violations may result in legal action without further notice, including without limitation, seizure, and injunction. So you have to understand that N-acetylcysteine number one was actually brought to market as a medication uh, in 1963. And that uh, really before that period of time, it was never used as a dietary supplement. Now realize that N-acetylcysteine is pretty benign. There's not a lot of side effects to it. But according to the definitions and according to the FDA and according to the law, uh, basically, they could not be using a drug in their formulation that uh, was brought as a drug and given FDA approval even in 1963. So in terms of the letter of the law, the FDA was completely correct in citing this letter. So as you can imagine, there was a lot of blowback and a lot of protests I mean, let's face it, this is a medication that's been used as a dietary supplement for over 30 years, and only now the FDA decides to step in and say that it's not going to allow that to happen. And so there's been a couple of protests or petitions, specifically from two citizen organizations, and you can see here the Council for Responsible Nutrition and the Natural Products Association basically asked the agency to determine that the products containing N-acetylcysteine are not excluded from the definition of a dietary supplement under Section 201. In other words, they wanted to make sure that products containing N-acetylcysteine could be sold as a dietary supplement. Well, back in March of 2022, the FDA denied this request. However, it says here that while the FDA's response to the citizen petitions confirmed NAC is excluded from the definition of a dietary supplement, the agency has not yet reached a decision on the NPA citizens petition alternative request that the agency undertake rulemaking to allow the use of NAC in dietary supplements. They go on to say, in the interim, in light of the absence of safety concerns based on our review to date, among other factors, the FDA is considering exercising enforcement discretion for NAC containing products labeled as dietary supplements. In other words, they are not going to change the definition of it, but they may decide to turn the blind eye and not exercise enforcement when companies are selling NAC as a dietary supplement. So that was back in March, and now we see articles here in August of 2022 titled NAC, New FDA Guidance Confirms Agency Exploring Potential of Rulemaking. In other words, they may decide to, again, turn a blind eye. And another article now from the 25th of August titled NAC Supplements Back on Amazon. So when the FDA initially came out with those letters back in July of 2020, Amazon voluntarily pulled all of its NAC products off of its platform. And now with this FDA ruling that's saying we may go ahead and turn a blind eye here to enforcement, these products are now back on Amazon. The article states that after a hiatus of over a year, Amazon is again selling NAC-containing dietary supplement products. The development was described as exciting by one industry trade association. 
The online retail giant announced in May of 2021 that it was removing NAC-containing supplements from its virtual shelves in response to an FDA announcement that the ingredient was not deemed to be a legal dietary ingredient. But Amazon's stance now appears to have changed seemingly in response to the recent guidance from that agency that it will exercise enforcement discretion for NAC, basically turning a blind eye to the sale of NAC-containing dietary supplement products so long as the products are not making non-compliant disease claims. Daniel Fabricant, PhD, the president and CEO of the National Products Association, NPA, which had petitioned the FDA, as we talked about, Welcome the move, telling us, quote, we're excited about the development. And sure enough, as I check here and search NAC on Amazon, there are a number of products that you can now purchase from Amazon that are NAC. And for those of you who might not know the history of MedCram, I am a pulmonary and critical care specialist. I uh, have my own clinical practice. I work at two different hospitals and their intensive care units. I'm a professor at two different medical schools and also the medical director at a respiratory care school. So I'm pretty busy. And um, Kyle Allred and myself uh, basically are the co-founders of MedCram.com. We started it about 10 years ago as a way of educating students, medical students, healthcare students, nurses, physician assistants, and physicians and residents in the understanding of medical topics. And so when the pandemic came around, I thought it was our job to basically break down the data for other healthcare professionals, but also people who were laymen, people who were not really into medical topics. And uh, quickly, we, we started to accumulate an audience and we started to make these videos. And we have never, ever accepted any money from any pharmaceutical companies. Uh, we've never accepted any funds. They've never sponsored us. We don't have sponsors. The way that we uh, make our funds and keep MedCram going is by selling our continuing medical education videos that are available at MedCram.com. So if you want to support us, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can turn on notifications so you'll get these videos. But if you know healthcare providers um, and they're interested in getting continuing medical education units, please make sure you join us at MedCram.com. And on MedCram's channel on YouTube, we've talked extensively about how vitamin D supplementation can actually reduce autoimmune diseases. We said that here in a video six months ago that got well over a million views. And we've talked about the role of vitamin D in COVID-19 in one of our most prolific videos that got over 12 million views over a year ago. I think vitamin D is really important, and I supplement 5,000 international units daily myself. But as the winter season comes on, I think I'm going to be starting once again my annual ritual of starting NAC 600 milligrams twice daily for six months, just as was done in that paper. We at MedCram talked about a lot of important things very early on in the pandemic. One of our guests at that time was Harvard professor Michael Minna, who talked to us about paper testing or home testing. We were also talking about early treatment and approaches and techniques and strategies in terms of ventilation and proning in the hospital. And we were getting a lot of good feedback from many of you at that time. What Kyle and I did not know is that a leader of a country was also watching our videos at that time. This is Prince Salman bin Hamad El Khalifa, who is the crown prince of the kingdom of Bahrain, but also the prime minister of Bahrain. He has a very hands-on approach and had actually started a COVID-19 task force to head up the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic in his country. And as such, he sought out education on the topic, cut red tape and bureaucracy to try to acquire testing and therapeutics very early in his country. He was able to acquire the necessary materials to implement the policies of his COVID-19 task force. Now, all of this was going on without our knowledge until February of 2022, when we got a call from the prime minister's office telling us that they were one of our biggest fans. And we actually talked to the crown prince himself, and he invited us to meet him in Washington, D.C., where he was going to award us a medical merit medal from the country of Bahrain. So Kyle and I went to Washington, D.C. We met with the ambassador from Bahrain to the United States, who presented us with the medal. 
We had a good discussion with the ambassador talking about some of the health challenges of our respective countries. Here you can see the ambassador presenting the medal to me as well. We had a wonderful discussion. They treated us very kindly. For those who don't know, the country of Bahrain has 1.5 million people. It is on an island in the Persian Gulf. It's a very open country. It recently signed the Abramic Accords with Israel. And actually, it was one of the first countries of the Middle East that the Israeli Prime Minister had ever visited just recently. There is also a United States military base in Bahrain. And so our two countries enjoy a wonderful relationship. And here you can see me meeting personally with the crown prince. My father is there on the left side. I'm there on the right. And here is a close-up of the medal itself. Incidentally, Kyle and I are the first non-Bahrainis to receive this medical merit medal. And of course, we were humbled by this. We had no idea that our videos were making such a reach on the international stage. The Crown Prince has told us that because of that information that uh, we were giving in those videos, that thousands of lives were saved in the Kingdom of Bahrain. So we thank God for that. We also thank the Prince and also his staff and the Ambassador for just saying thanks. It's not every day that very busy people who are running countries stop to say thanks for this type of service. And we'd also like to thank you, our viewers, for making MedCram what it is today. Um, we've done a number of videos. The last couple of videos have gotten well over 99% uh, in terms of thumbs up. And uh, it's a privilege to, to make this content for you who are, are watching and uh, will continue to do so. Uh, if you are a supporter, please go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications. We're also on Instagram. We're starting to do on a daily basis some tips for not only physicians and PAs and nurses and providers, but also for lay people in terms of healthcare tips and health optimization. Uh, we also have a, uh, a merchandise that we're now selling on our YouTube channel. So if you're interested, please uh, support us and uh, stay tuned as there will be more. Thanks for joining us.